Hey friends, what do you say we take a look at some more Thomas Wooden Railway items? Today's focus is on the always devious yet sometimes controversial Diesel 10 for the Thomas Wooden Railway line. This version of Diesel 10 was the one I had as a child. I don't really remember where I got it, but I presume I got it after I watched Thomas and the Magic Railroad, which is the movie in which Diesel 10 was introduced. As you can see, he has a couple of nicks on him. I definitely played with Diesel 10 a lot as a kid, and I've always thought he's been a, a, pr a very good character in the Thomas and Friends series. We need a good old fashioned villain once in a while. Um, but yeah, this is the one I had as a child. I'm going to bring in this other version right here that was released a few years later. They're pretty much identical, maybe some small changes here or there, but for the most part, um, they're pretty much the same. So I'm going to set this one off to the side, and we're going to call this version of Diesel 10 Magic Railroad Diesel 10 because that's pretty much what it is. Like I said, Diesel 10 introduced in Thomas and the Magic Railroad, and then wasn't seen again for a couple of years, but that didn't stop the merchandise, specifically in the Thomas Wooden Railway range. Um, that didn't stop them from producing uh, more versions of Diesel 10, even though he kind of had his fanfare uh, with the Magic Railroad. So. Diesel 10, let's talk about this guy. Uh, you know, like I said, always devious, I want to say. Um, but, you know, his Thomas Wooden Railway merchandise is going to kind of go down to a weird spot here in a couple of minutes. But let's enjoy this version of Diesel 10 right here. Uh, this was modeled after his appearance in Thomas and the Magic Railroad. Diesel 10 has a very unique shape and a very, a very unique color. What makes him stand apart from other engines, especially other diesels, is that he has this movable claw on top of him, which kind of was affectionately named Pinchy. We'll talk about Diesel 10's claw, or Pinchy, more um, as we go along in this video. But let me show you guys how it works. It's just kind of on a sliding mechanism. This uh, whole top area is plastic, and it just moves forwards and backwards. I can kind of lift it up here, but that's not really you know, supposed to happen. It's not supposed to articulate in this general direction. It's supposed to just move forwards and backwards. Now I'd say some articulation or some, some movement is better than no movement, but Pinchy in Thomas and the Magic Railroad and in later appearances kind of has this 360 degree pivot rotation, which a couple of different ranges of merchandise have been able to emulate pretty well, most notably like take along and maybe even take and play for a little bit. But in the wooden railway line, Pinchy just moves forwards and backwards. And like I said, this is better than no movement, but compared to what we see in Thomas and the Magic Railroad, it is a bit of a letdown. I remember as a kid, I was, you know, really, you saw, you know, Pinchy, you know, go out and grab Mr conductor you know he would raise his claw and hit something you know he would point it at the engines this was a bit of a letdown but you know it, it still does the job in your little uh, toy fantasy land um, like I said diesel 10 has a very unique color I don't even know what to really call that color but it's definitely unique and take note of the direction of these what we'll call hazard stripes on the side here they are going to change direction the slant is going to change as we look at different versions of diesel 10 but overall here, Diesel 10's looking great. He's got very nice detailing all across the top. He actually has some windows. Um, you can barely see him under Pinchy front and back. Like I said, this whole top area is plastic to incorporate the Pinchy mechanism. But yeah, I really like Diesel 10, loved him as a kid. And although his merchandise has kind of gone to a weird spot, I can definitely say this is the best version of Diesel 10 by far. I haven't even talked about the face. The face is awesome. And what's, in what's interesting to note is that, yes, he is smiling in this uh, picture here. But with the way the eyebrows are shaped and just the overall expression, you can definitely tell he's up to something. It is not a happy smile. It is like a devious, sinister smile or something like that. So just take note of the face. Um, so like I said, you know, Diesel 10 appeared in Thomas and the Magic Railroad. Then he made a very short uh, cameo. Actually, it wasn't a cameo. It was a, big, a bit of a supporting role in Calling All Engines. And then he actually made a cameo appearance in The Great Discovery. And it wasn't until 2010, 2011 that Diesel 10 got his CGI render. He appeared at the very end of Misty Island Rescue, which set up for a main starring appearance in Day of the Diesels, which was the 2011 Thomas and Friends movie. And this was right around when all the characters were getting CGI uh, faces and upgrades or downgrades, whichever way you want to fall. So we got this version of Diesel 10. This version was sold for 10 years. It's really, really great. And since Diesel 10 was so popular, he never really went out of production. However, this version of Diesel 10 changes a few things, most notably the face. 
yes, it's still a smiling face, but it doesn't really have the angst or the anger that this version of Diesel 10 does. As you can kind of tell, Pinchy's also sitting off to the side. I think that's not something that's normal. It's just something to do with my individual model here. Um, but yeah, I really think this was a poor attempt at a CGI version of this face. Um, they, they, they just kind of got it wrong and the pupils are too small. So it gives Diesel 10 this wide-eyed, you know, crazy looking face, in my opinion. Um, we'll compare these two. And as you can tell right away, there's a bit of a uh, color change here. I'd say this is a more duller color. This is leaning more towards like brownish yellow. Um, so yeah, a paint change. And also take a look at the hazard stripes. This is what I was talking about earlier. Not only have they changed color, they've also changed direction, which is something I never even knew existed. I knew this version of Diesel 10 existed, obviously, but I never, ever would have paid attention to the direction of the hazard stripes, which is just super interesting to me. So let's compare these uh, these faces side by side here. <laughs> you can have your say as to which one you like more. Um, I've definitely made known uh, which one I like. But also up top here, look at Pinchy. He's also changed color, um, but he still only has this forwards, backwards motion um, that we're gonna see for just a little bit longer, but big color change, kind of interesting right there. Um, up top, we flip these guys on their side. We still have a plastic top, but as you can see, this detailing is no longer colored in. Um, like I said, top still plastic, but gotten rid of just a tiny bit of detailing right there. But overall, all things considered, you know, the, the area of the detailing, like the windows, and if we can call these vents maybe, um, all that is still relatively the same. These lines are now silver. One interesting thing, just no detailing on the back. I don't know if the real, you know, model Diesel 10 or CGI render of Diesel 10 has anything on the back. But fortunately, I'll show it in a sec, we still do have rear and front windows under Pinchy. They're actually a little bit better, in my opinion. They look more like windows versus just kind of this, this black space underneath Pinchy. And you're, you're like, oh yeah, I think those are supposed to be windows. So, all things considered... You know, considering where Diesel 10 is going to go in just a short bit here, this version actually isn't too bad. Take a look at how Pinchy sits at the top of the model and just the top of the models in general. We have sort of this, you know, slanting down area where the windows are, and then we got a little bit of what I'll call runoff area at the front and the back. That is completely missing on this Diesel 10. It's almost, you know, there's hardly any room at the back here. They have, I wouldn't say they've shortened the model up, but they've definitely... Um, increase the size of this plastic area up here to almost extend the entire length of Diesel 10. Whereas Pinchy here, you can kind of see there's a gap between where Pinchy sits in the window, Pinchy is right on that window in the 2011 Day of the Diesels version. And this is something, this body change, is something that's going to uh, keep reoccurring as we move along with di uh, different models. So you guys can kind of have your opinions. Um, yeah, looking back on it, it's so funny. If I'd done this review like 10 years ago, I totally would have slammed the 2011 version of Diesel 10. Even though it is 2011, it has Tomy uh, copyright on the bottom. Um, but yeah, it's kind of funny what time will make you do. Yeah, the face isn't that great, but overall, detailing-wise and the way it looks, um, yeah, pretty solid, I'm going to say. But let's bring in the Fisher-Price Mattel version. So when these guys took over the range in 2013, um, they introduced or reintroduced a lot of characters that kind of took me by surprise. Um, one of them was Diesel 10. I guess that wasn't too big of a surprise since he had just recently appeared, but they also threw out, you know, Lady and, you know, Fearless Freddy and all these other characters that I was like, okay. Uh, but this is, we're going to talk about versions 1 and 2 of the Fisher-Price version. Um, this is first release, Diesel 10. This is a, a Diesel 10 that I unboxed in a video. It came new in box and it came with a pamphlet, which means it was like the first run. Big change here is that the bogies are plastic. Maybe you guys can hear the difference. Wood on this one and plastic here. So uh, that was a big change that went into all bogey engines. Underneath we got a little bit of uh, different detailing. Um, but tell you what, you know, this right here, still relatively similar, maybe a little bit less detailing. Um, just like maybe some thicker paints were applied, but the one thing right here, we don't have any rear windows and we don't have any front windows under Pinchy there either. However, Pinchy still moves in this sliding direction. However, 
I feel like he doesn't move as much. I think he's a little bit more limited. He only moves that much right there. I think he moves a little bit more with these other two versions. Let's talk about the face. Yes, he's smiling, and yes, when this version of Diesel 10 was released, I was like, why can't we get old, angry Diesel 10 back? And I still wish that was the case. Um, I'm not going to say this face is good. It's definitely grown on me, and it's like, yeah, I guess if you want to have a happy Diesel 10 in your series or, you know, your layout or whatever, this is the way to go. Um, but yeah, let's see how, uh... Color-wise, we stack up here. Look at this. First three versions of Diesel 10. We're getting lighter and lighter as we move along. We got Magic Railroad Diesel 10, Day of the Diesels Diesel 10. We'll just call this Mattel Diesel 10. Um, this is something very interesting. Look at the hazard stripes. You know, we got them going this way, and then I showed you guys how we reversed them. They're slanted the other way. Okay, well, they're following this um, this Day of the Diesel's learning curve Tomy version, but if I swap this, this is I just do not understand this at all. We have them facing this way. We have them facing the opposite way here. Now they're facing the opposite way on the, on the Mattel version. And so what you guys, it's kind of confusing. So this side, they're the same. This side, they are not the same. And what I'm going to try to say to explain this is that what they basically did with this version of Diesel 10, they took, I imagine them working on this on a computer, they took a screenshot of that individual hazard stripe, and they just copied and pasted it to the other side. If you want to say, let's just say this is slanting to the right. You know, we got left, we got right. Let's just say it's slanting to the right. If it's supposed to be, you know, straight up, somebody's come along and pushed it this way. It's slanting to the right on this side, it's slanting to the right on this side. With this version of Diesel 10, it's slanting to the right on this side, but it's suddenly slanting to the right on the, or excuse me, it's slanting to the left on this side. And I, I don't know why that was done, but it's definitely interesting. So from this side, it's like, oh yeah, just copy and paste. But on this side, some changes going on. So I just wanted to point that out. It's kind of confusing, uh, <laughs> but once again, I would have never even questioned the hazard stripe design or the slant until I started preparing for this video. So I just wanted to point that out there. Um, Pinchy is, man, he's just a tiny bit darker on the Fisher Price Mattel version. But uh, yeah, I mean, we're keeping the overall shape. We still kind of have this bogey action going on. Diesel 10 is still very long, which he's supposed to be. So yeah, overall, you know, we're looking pretty good. I, you know, things are looking pretty promising. Um, really quickly, like I said, there's actually two versions of Fisher-Price uh, Diesel 10. Maybe you have seen, maybe you're able to um, pick out which, uh, what the difference is right here. Once again, I didn't even notice there were uh, there two versions. So we got version one over here. This was the initial release. And then I don't know why they did this, but they came in and shortened the top of Diesel 10 like we saw in the Day of the Diesels version right here. So let's focus on these two just for a second. Look at how little space there is between the top of Diesel 10 and to where it drops down. I mean, on this one, it's, it's almost gone. Pinchy sits, you know, right on top of Diesel 10's face in both of these models here. And let's take a look at the hazard stripe action. Yeah, yeah. Slanting to the, to the right this way, to the right here, and to the left here. So it follows, it follows its precursor's version of how the slants are done. Now let's take a look at the two Fisher-Price versions. I definitely like this version better. I think this shape is a lot more natural. This looks like a very brick type shape with not a whole lot of design there, but we're gonna take a look at the wood model here in a sec. And this, this uh, design is gonna kind of be shrunken down. Um, so you're gonna see it reappear here in just a moment. As far as the faces go, it's hard to talk about the faces because you know the faces always vary between two identical <laughs> um, diesel tens. Um, but it's just interesting to note the first version of mine from 2013 has smaller pupils. This one, which was, you know, the second or third run or how many, how many runs they did, a little bit of a different face design. The pupils are bigger. They're a little bit off center. Um, but take a look at where Pinchy sits. He sits up on this version, but on this one right here, he is right on top of Diesel 10's face. That just doesn't look good to me. Um, I'd rather... I think it looks a lot better when Pinchy's just a tiny bit up, so it's not like the, the claw is right down on Diesel 10. And it's so funny, this was kind of a subconscious thing 
I would see versions of these on eBay, and in my mind, I'd be like, ooh, that version of Diesel 10 looks weird. I don't know what it is, but it's just like a very blocky design. And then I would take a look at this version, I'd be like, oh, that one looks a lot better for some reason. But I never really put two and two together. I was just, I didn't even know there were, there were different production runs. But it appears as though they have the same design all the way through. You know, same detailing. We talked about the hazard stripes. Um, it's just that this plastic part up top here, you can, this is a, this will be a good way to show it. This plastic top is, uh, has just been extended a little bit longer to get it to almost the end of Diesel 10. And I just, I'm not a fan of that because, you know, Diesel 10 still has that, you know, bowler spam can D199 shape inherently. And this one, we're starting to take a look. Oh, it's more of like a, a Boko or a Daisy shape, for example. So I'm not the biggest fan of this model. Um, but yeah, considering what's about to come, I guess we should just count our blessings. So let me clean up a little bit right here. We got Magic Railroad Diesel 10, Day of the Diesels Diesel 10. We got, this is our first run, Fisher Price Diesel 10. This is our second run. Let me bring in this really quick. This is Talking Diesel 10. Uh, hello, I'm Diesel 10. And um, it's just really interesting because look how blocky it is. I think it's that way to incorporate the uh, battery and the light in the cab there. Ah, you're puffing slowly today. Very, very weird sayings. Um, but the light is a nice touch. I just wanted to bring this up because, I mean, this is, <laughs> there is there is no back to this at all. And of course it's a different setup to do with the battery, but I just wanted to show that off really quick. The front here, it's definitely, you know, very similar to this version. Look at where Pinchy sits. Um, back here, it is just a straight drop off, something like you'd see with Boko or Daisy. So I just wanted to throw that version in there. So well, let's just let's just rip the Band-Aid off and uh, get this going. This is Thomas Wood Diesel 10. This is the unpainted version. Big thing right away, we have shrunk down, we are no longer using bogies, and we are now the same size as Thomas. And I just cannot, for the life of me, um, figure out why this was done, other than they just wanted to cut, you know, costs and, you know, bogies and all those plastic pieces, I guess, eat up so much money. So, here we are, guys. Um, there's a couple of big changes as well. The face is different. Let's just talk, let's just uh, reference the previous face really quick. So the pupils um, are pretty consistently much bigger than this other version. The face is also a little bit smaller because I think these Thomas Wood engines are a little bit narrower too, even though they use the same track. Pinchy has also been reduced in size and we'll talk about the way Pinchy moves here in just a sec. But yeah, the face there, um, you know, somewhat similar, but they just, the faces just continue to get more and more cartoony in my opinion. Um, Hazard stripe wise, we are slanted to the right and slanted to the right. So we've done our copy paste thing. I think, it, I, I don't know, <laughs> really know why that was done on some of the engines and it wasn't done on some others, but just thought I would bring that up. So yeah, this version of diesel 10, it is not to scale. What's hilarious is if you, you know, Thomas Wood Winston is longer than diesel 10. And there is, I don't, I don't see how that is excusable in any way. Um, they've done a good job of reducing down the size of everything. The hazard stripes are, are, you know, they're like the same size as they used to be. So we got way more hazard, we got, sorry, way few hazard stripes. There should be more. They should have been reduced down. But like the vents and stuff on the back here, this is terrible. Look at that. That is, that is just awful, unfortunately. Yeah, we've, uh, we're now the same size as Thomas and Percy. And it's just, you know, in the name of, in the name of cost. Pinchy no longer has his sliding action because that would have been too expensive. That would have made Pinchy cover the entirety of this model, I think. He is uh, kind of on a rotation device. I wouldn't really call it a pivot because Pinchy doesn't raise up. He just spins in a circle now, um, which I think, you know, we, we can get cool shots like this. Like, you know, if we had Thomas off to the side here, it's like, gar, get away from me, which wouldn't have been possible in later versions. Um, but I do miss the sliding action. I think the sliding action is really a TWR-esque thing. Um, yeah, maybe we should just be happy that it moves, because who knows, you know, maybe the next version, it'll just, 
it'll probably be like a drawing. Honestly, you know, considering, you know, like Thomas Wood Bell, which uh, at the time of the making of this video hasn't been released in full paint, but I have like a prototype version that's unpainted like this. Considering they didn't even bother putting like water cannons or anything on there, they just painted them on. I, I guess maybe in the future, we could be looking at a painted on pinchy. You know, and it's probably just going to be a gray line. It's just like, imagine that that's a plastic claw. So yeah, guys, this is this is pretty bad right here. I think Diesel 10 suffers a lot from the Thomas Wood switchover. I think all the engines suffer. But Diesel 10, you know, you shrink them down. And then the back here, I mean, there are, there are windows on the front. They are very hard to see. They're there, but they are very hard to see. And the problem is, is that Diesel 10's color is already pretty close to like a brown, which is the color of the wood. So you gotta look really hard to see the limited paint on this thing. This is garbage. Um, I think we take a step in the right direction here. I mean, look how much better immediately. Look how much better that is. Especially the one thing that gets me is the, the chassis. You start bringing back the colored chassis and it's like, okay, you know, we're improving. Slowly but surely, we are improving. Um, however, there are still a lot of things wrong. I, you know, cannot excuse the, the length or the lack of length on this model. The face is still the same. It's still pretty cartoony. Pinchy um, moves. This one is a lot stickier than the other version. It, it, it locks and it's, it's very hard to, uh, to move around. But nonetheless, he still, still rotates. Um, on the side here, I guess, is, I guess I should bring in, you can really start to see all the paint that was missing um, on this Thomas Wood, this first run of Diesel 10. Um, it really starts to pop. I mean, even this bottom area right here, it's like, oh, that, that was supposed to be painted in? Oh yeah, I guess, I guess it should. Um, what's really interesting, I think it's just super lazy. You know, they had windows on the front, and yes, we do get windows on this painted version of Diesel 10. Um, which is a big improvement when you look at this model straight ahead. Look at that. Boom. Looking good already. Um, but just nothing on the back. And this is disappointing. And I know these versions didn't have windows on the back. But that's still no excuse. I think we should still have some windows on the back there. Because how is Diesel 10's driver going to see? Up top, look at this, guys. I mean, it, it was just... It looks like really faded detailing up here. And just, it's amazing what a little paint can do. So yes, this version of Diesel 10 is not perfect. It is far from perfect. But I do say paint does help these wood items um, to the point of, you know, getting these toys back where they need to be. Absolutely not. Um, I, the, the second you got rid of bogeys on Diesel 10 and shrunk them down, um, you lose all sense of, you know, whatever realism is back. You're trying to tell me, I mean, especially to like an intimidation factor, you're trying to tell me that this version of Diesel 10 is cooler than this one? Nah, this one, I can see this version of Diesel 10 going up against Gordon, you know, or something like that, or the Flying Scotsman, for example. This puny little version of Diesel 10, no way. It is, it, it's, I, I can't take this version of Diesel 10 seriously, mostly due to the size and the shape but also the face. I mean, that is just the happiest Diesel 10 I've ever seen. And for a guy who wanted to destroy the railway at one point, it is just a sad, sad demise. I got a surprise for you guys, however. Uh, Brio Diesel 10, let's end this um, video on a happy note. Um, this is not made by Learning Curve or Tomy or Fisher Price. This was made by Brio. And I believe Brio's contract started to run out right around, or it definitely wasn't renewed around the time of Thomas and the Magic Railroad. So there's not a whole lot written about Thomas Brio engines, but I'm going to do my best here. First off, we have a very, very long version of Diesel 10. We kind of have this weird coupling system underneath. Um, as you can see, you know, Brio on the wheels right here. Pinchy is another story. We'll talk about him in a sec, but look at that face. That is probably... Oh, that is a scary face. I, I'd argue that's scarier than this right here. It's a close competition, but that is a mean face. And I love it because Diesel 10 is supposed to be mean, guys. Um, yeah, well, we'll talk about Pinchy here in a sec. But detailing-wise, right here, these two, I'm comparing these two because they were, you know, technically sold in stores at the same time. Definitely a different color. If you go take a look at a prototype picture of um, Learning Curve Diesel 10, you'll notice that his paint color is more along the lines of this. And I would say this is what Diesel 10 is actually painted like in Thomas and the Magic Railroad. So I give kudos to Brio for getting the color a little bit more right. 
Um, detailing wise, I think this stuff is so spread out and it looks very unnatural to me, probably just because I'm used to this version. I would probably have to give the detailing award to learning curve over here. And I think the hazard stripes look way better on learning curve right here. There was an attempt on the Brio version, but um, yeah, they just, they just don't look that great in my opinion. Um, but nonetheless, at least they're there. Um, it's very, this, this version of diesel 10 is something else. This is probably one of the more unique versions of a Brio engine. So yes, Pinchy, let's address the elephant in the room. This Pinchy is unlike anything we have seen here. There is a sliding action. It's very, very stiff and rigid. You, you have to yank on this thing, but look at how much more advanced this version of Pinchy is right out of the gate. So if we're, if we're talking about, like if Brio had just done a learning curve version, we're talking about this would be a plastic piece up here and it would just move forward like this. What's interesting is it's just a portion of Pinchy that moves forward, not the entire version of Pinchy like we see right here. It's almost like, you know, this is, this is locked in place on the Brio version. There's like an extension part that moves as you can see right here. Um, I had some Brio Bob the Builder toys as a kid, and I can't remember it exactly, but there's a blue crane. I think his name is Lofty, and he has a crane arm similar to this, and I'm pretty sure this is the same type of design, because this had, when I started messing around with this, this has a very similar feel to it, and I'm guessing it's from my childhood when I had that toy. Um, Pinchy here is actually a magnet. This provides a little bit more opportunity and versatility. Whereas you kind of just have to imagine, you know, this diesel 10 picking up something. We actually have him on a string and he's magnetic. So I do have a piece of cargo here. And look at that. So diesel 10 can pick stuff up. I don't know where you're going to put it. <laughs> maybe, maybe right there or something like that, but you can swing it off to the side. And again, with this crane arm, look at this 360 degree maneuverability, which I always loved about the take along version. I think the problem with this pinchy, there's a lot of great things. It moves, it rotates. I mean, you know, you can you can spin them around and put pinchy that way. I mean, this is this front area is weird to look at, but that's what Diesel 10 looks like when he doesn't have pinchy hanging in front of him. And when I speak of hanging in front of him, I mean it like this. This is the problem here. Pinchy's on a little bit of a string. If you had kind of a uh, a little bit of a place to sit, it would be a lot better. You kind of just have to balance him up here. Otherwise he hangs down and he connects to the, the front magnet up front here. I think this is just more of an annoying thing than, than anything. I think the playability with this tops anything older diesel tens have ever done. Um, but yeah, this is just annoying and I just don't think it looks good. So I think it's like, I imagine, you know, maybe Pinchy not being on a string. I think let's just say, you know, Pinchy just at the end of this plastic claw right here, the, the crane part, we have this. And yes, it moves and it extends. And honestly, that would be good enough for me. Um, but yeah, since we kind of have this string hanging here, I wish there was an area where we could slide Pinchy in and he could kind of sit up like this so that we still get kind of this classic, you know, Pinchy and Diesel 10 staring at you action. Here's another thing with the magnet. I don't think Pinchy looks as good as on the Brio version. Um, I really love, you know, they, I, I guess I'll just call it like a grill. It kind of looks like a grill to me with all these, with all the indents. Um, on the Brio version here, we don't get that. It's just, we got a little bit of detailing on the side. But other than that, yeah, you just kind of have to throw Pinchy somewhere and hope he stays. So 95% of this Brio Diesel 10 is really awesome in my opinion. The fact that Pinchy swivels and moves and the face is great and honestly the color is pretty on par. Um, unfortunately, it's the actual physical, if we can call this the crane, the physical Pinchy part that I'm not too crazy about. However, I really appreciate that Brio would take the time to try something like that. Um, it's definitely, um, it, it's definitely something that I don't think Learning Curve would ever try. It would be interesting if there's like prototype versions of this Diesel 10 if they ever considered something like this. But man, this screams Brio. And speaking of Brio, there's the back. Uh, we don't have any front windows because this version of Pinchy takes up a lot more space. But overall, guys, um, I wanted to show this version off because it is unlike anything. We kind of have a natural progression here up until I'd say about these two. A very natural progression of diesel 10s. Um, and then, yeah, it all kind of goes to heck right here. 
But this version of Diesel 10, wow. I mean, if you're ever to, if you're ever going to go after a Brio version of a Thomas character, this is something else right here. I mean, this just takes my breath away, and it is so, so cool. Aesthetically, not the best, um, but as a kid, you know, especially I'm guessing with other Thomas and Friends Brio engines or just Brio engine in, uh, in general, you know, he, he would look, uh, he wouldn't look out of place um, with that, with Pinchy hanging down right there. So this has been a very kind of interesting um, Thomas Wooden Railway discussion on Diesel 10, but I, guys, I think we've learned a lot. You know, we've kind of seen how Diesel 10 has evolved. There's been a lot of different versions within the past, you know, six, seven years. Um, you know, I will leave your guys' thoughts on the wood versions right here to yourself so you guys know what I think about them. Um, but Diesel 10, you know, I think this classic one remains supreme. But the evolution, and I really do think it is an evolution, um, has been pretty fantastic to kind of witness here as we got all the different versions of Diesel 10 sitting on the table. So guys, thank you all so much for watching this very long video, one of the longest discussions I think I've ever done. But hopefully I've been able to show off all the different versions of Diesel 10 and how they work. And let me know which one is your favorite in the comments below. Until next time, this is Thomas Wynn Railway saying thanks for watching.